It can be quite difficult to find good gifts for music producers and synth lovers. So here is my yearly music production gift guide. It's a bunch of things around $100, but also a couple of free gifts that are more about kindness than consumption. So you could go ahead and show this video to your friends, your family, your partner, so they know what to get you or what you want them to do for you. So let's get to it. Let's start off the video with a free gift that money can't really buy, but it can still be quite difficult in today's stressed out society. And that is giving somebody your attention. Make some delicious coffee or tea and just spend time with your friend, family member, partner, child, and listen to what they're actually producing, the, the music, the art that they're creating, and really pay attention. Try and understand it. This is something my parents never really did with me. And it's something I've always missed. And I think it's one of the best gifts that you can give anybody. Turn off the phone and really pay attention to what a loved one is making. I'll come back with some more free gift ideas, but here is some cool stuff. A theme of this year's video is actually protecting your expensive gear. And on that note, I have something very interesting. This here is one of many cases that you can find over at Analog Cases. And they're well built and made to fit perfectly for a bunch of popular synths. So here, for example, we have the Digitone. And we have space for the power brick. And you can also lock the cases. Besides having these hard cases, they also offer these softer cases. So this here is the Pulse case for the M32 MIDI keyboard. And then you have ample space here for cables, for example. So if you have a partner or friend that you know travel a lot with their gear, go and check out Analog Cases, linked down below. And if you happen to be a Bowbeats patron over at patreon.com slash Bowbeats, there's actually an analog cases discount going on right now, exclusive to patrons, so go and check it out. For my next gift, I want you to come a little closer. Don't be afraid, come closer. This here is the Polyphonic Whale, and it's not a gift for a synth lover per se, or it could be. It's more so the gift for you who is a synth lover, and you want to introduce somebody to the world of sound. Please. So Bo, what is this ASMR synthesizer? Well, it's the polyphonic whale. It has microphones that captures the world around you, combines it with synthesis and creates these beautiful tones. So let's talk MIDI keyboards. I'm gonna recommend two different keyboards and this is the first one. This is the Microlab and it's a bit under $100. I think it's about $80 or 80 euros. And it's a small portable MIDI controller from Arturia with Arturia software and Bitwig included an H track version of Bitwig. The keys on this one is pretty nice for the money you're paying. It's very similar to something like the key step. The design itself is very similar to the key step, but it is a USB MIDI keyboard with this nifty design choice that you can tuck in the cable. And you can of course remove it entirely if it breaks or if you want to replace it. And having this protective material around it makes it something that's very easy to toss in a backpack. There's no knobs or faders that you can be afraid of breaking. You can just tuck in the cable and throw it into your backpack. It's connected via USB and that's the only connection you have for it. There's even a chord mode so you can program chords and play chords with just one note like this, which is very handy. You also have pitch and mod touch controllers. All in all, a very simple but practical MIDI keyboard. Another good MIDI keyboard around $100 or euros is the M32 from Native Instruments. It features eight knobs. They're actually very nice quality, same as on the Machina Mark III. And you also have octave up and down. You have two controllers over here. 
Here you have control for your DAW with start, stop, record and so on. And the feel of the keyboard itself is actually pretty nice for a small and inexpensive MIDI keyboard. In terms of connections, it's just a normal USB to hook it up to a computer, so you can use it with basically any computer, and you have a foot pedal input as well. So let's say you have somebody that you want to give a MIDI controller to, which one should you get? To me it comes down to portability versus having this onboard control. Now this one is a little bit more expensive, but you do have the 8 knobs that you can program to work with pretty much any DAW, any music software, and it works very well with Native Instruments own software. Whereas the Microlab have much less in terms of onboard control, but it is, as you can see, smaller, less expensive, and with this... Let's see, where is it? <laughs> and with this practical cable solution. Another difference is the software package that you get with each. With the M32, you're getting Ableton 10 Lite. So that's a really good music software for anybody starting out, but you're also getting a full version of Machina software, which works perfectly with complete keyboards, with the integration with the knobs and so on. And you also get a bunch of software instruments. For the Microlab, and remember, this is quite a lot cheaper than the M32, but you still get a full functioning DAW, Bitwig 8 tracks, which I think is less limited than Ableton 10 Lite. So it's a really good music software, they're very similar Ableton and Bitwig, and you also get access to some of Arturia's software, for example, their analog labs, I think it's a light version that you get with the Microlab. So beside the price difference and obvious physical differences, I would say that the software package, especially if you're buying this for somebody that's just starting out, is the main difference. So read up on this. Before we take a look at some other cool things that you can buy, here's another free gift that you can give somebody. As creatives, we easily get self-absorbed and we kind of forget what's going on around us. So I think giving like a gift card to a friend where you'll say that you'll spend a day with him or her doing something creative, I think that's super valuable. Maybe you're a vocalist, so you could add some vocals to a track. Maybe you're a drummer, you can help with some drums. Maybe you can mix. Maybe you can master. You know, whatever it is, even if it's just spending time in the studio with somebody, giving them attention, listening, or helping them with some kind of practical thing, moving, <laughs> moving a piece of heavy furniture around. Regardless, I think that it's a gift that doesn't cost much, it costs your time and attention, and I think it could be well worth it for a friend. Next up I have something that works for synth lovers and guitarists and bass players alike, namely dummies. So these dummies here are small protective caps of sorts that you can use to protect your gear from water and dust and what else does it say? Rust, even. So for example, you can put it in here. In my microphone inputs of my Zoom. Something like this. And they come in different shapes. Some of them are small like skulls, I suppose, that's very rock and roll. And here are some more diamond shaped ones. And I could put them, for example, in the IO for my synth here, for example. It's a kind of cute, caring and inexpensive gift for somebody with a lot of instruments and a lot of dust. If there's one thing you see in a lot of home studios and synth caves, it's dust. And thankfully this next gift here protects against that. So these are deck savers, you've probably seen them around. They're thick plastic covers that you can put on your synths that are form-fitted for different synths. And yeah, just protects them. I have small children, one year old, five year old, and yeah, if I ever let them in my studio, I'm very thankful that I have something like this covering my gear because they're knocking stuff over a lot of the time. And sometimes when they come in with bottles of water, it's just very nice to have your gear protected like this. So a deck saver is an inexpensive gift that any synth lover will like. So if it's for your partner, just have a look at what synth they're owning and look at the deck saver page if they have a cover for that particular model. The next gift idea is not this one. This is an inexpensive power bank. And this here is a micro freak from Arturia and it's definitely more than $100. But these here are rip cords from my vault. And with a bit of magic, you can turn this synthesizer that isn't battery powered into a battery powered synth. 
voila! So now I'm powering the Microfreak using this $20 battery pack and it's because of this 12 volt power converter and there are different versions and you can simply look up on their website what version you should be going for depending on what synth you want to actually be powering. Big important disclaimer though, make sure you read up on which cable you need so you don't accidentally destroy your synth. So for my next gift I have the channel sponsor DistroKid. It's a service that lets you upload unlimited tracks to Spotify and Apple Music and I actually think that giving away a DistroKid subscription to somebody that you know is looking to put their music out there is, is a good idea. Because some people really need a little nudge or push to get their stuff out there. Or maybe you have a child and you want to help them get their stuff out there. Then you should check out DistroKid. I have a link in the description with a discount as well. I've been using them myself for many years and I'm very happy with the service. So giving somebody a year of DistroKid or maybe even three years, that's about $60, lets them upload as much as they want and then they can see if they want to continue with the service or not. Every year I try and include something for the Eurac enthusiasts and this year I have cables here from Polar Noise. They sent a few over. Now if cables can be sexy, these definitely are. They have a very nice feel to them, they look very nice and they come in absurdly long lengths. So if you're looking for Eurac cables or if your partner and friend is a Eurac enthusiast, I would say check out Polar Noise, they got some very interesting cables. And speaking of my volts, this here is a little mixer. It's a small, super inexpensive, five stereo input, one stereo output passive mixer. So basically you can take five, uh, five stereo signals, say five synths, and mix them together into one stereo output. This is all done passively, which means that you have no level controls for the individual channels here. So it's best for say five synths where you have individual volume controls for the synths. But ultimately it's an inexpensive way of connecting together a couple of small battery powered synths because this one, the mixer, doesn't require any power. There's no battery or power connection needed. It just, it just mixes the signals together passively. And you could hook up the other end to a recorder or a speaker pair or something like that. This here is the Mini Log XD and as you probably already know this is way more than $100. But what isn't over $100 is these caps, these custom caps. So here I've exchanged most of the black ones for red ones from DJ Tech Tool. So these are Chroma caps I think is the name. But there's of course many other brands out there. Now there's plenty of reason why you might want to change the caps of a synth. One reason could be to see the line. Here's a little line that you might even not even see. That's one reason. Another one is aesthetics. Another one is grip. For me personally, it's just a, a bit of good fun to changing the caps. One thing to keep in mind when you're buying this is that not all caps work on all synths, so you have to check the compatibility. On the DJ Tech Tools website, and they did send this to me, you can actually check. So what knobs can I use for this synth in particular? For the mini logs, you can search for the synth that you own or somebody in your family or a friend or a partner owns. Just make sure to save the old knobs or caps because you might want to resell the synth at some point and you know, some people might want the original stuff. So, voila! There we go. Pretty nice. So this is definitely an inexpensive gift to anybody who has a lot of synths or MIDI controllers. Just, yeah, go and check it out, see if it's something for you. And here's another free gift that my wife actually came up with. What is the most valuable resource that you have? It is time. For example, if you have children giving your partner a gift card for, say, an afternoon off on a Saturday or Sunday, where you take care of the children and your partner can just devote his or her time to music. I think that can be super valuable and really appreciated. So not a very costly gift, but one that I think can go down really well. 
Thank you so much for watching this year's best synths and music production gifts under $100. If you have any good suggestions or tips for gifts, leave them down in the comment section. I also want to thank the sponsor, distrokid.com. If you need a good service for putting your music on Spotify and Apple Music and other stores, go and check out distrokid.com. Talk to you later. Thank you.